I accept it completely. I mean, it is more than 20 years since I last wore a colourful jumper on TV, but people do remember them. And the story is true that when I turned up at the House of Commons wearing a proper, you know, grey suit to look like one of John Major's men, almost the first time I rose to speak in the Commons, John Prescott clocked me, leant forward and muttered, Woolly jumper! <laughs> And there's something about it that even makes me laugh. And, and generally speaking, things that I watch, and certainly things with which, in which I have participated, I find it extremely difficult to, to, you know, to laugh at after the event. But there's something about it. it it's just the utter seriousness of the context. There are professions that are addictive. And, uh, for instance, being a doctor seems to be an addiction. Doctors that follow doctors. Uh, it, it gets into your blood. I think it's because it's the most enjoyable of professions. And... In the years I've been doing it, I'm constantly astonished at the sort of privilege of going, not, not just of interviewing Nelson Mandela, but of interviewing a family in the slums of Bombay. It's just a privilege beyond compare, really. And just by virtue of being a journalist, it's le legitimized. I was brought up in Oxfordshire, miles away from the sea, miles away from lakes, miles away from boats. But I read these books as a child and I thought, I've really got to try and get a bit close to these subjects. My brother and I made a small sailing dinghy together which sank, which was a disaster. But with my own children, I then was able to live out the fantasy. Not consciously, but I lived in London for most of my 20s, but I was constantly escaping, mainly back to my mum and dad's at weekends. And, and then I found... River Cottage, which really was initially was a place I rented, Marie and I rented with a, another couple as a, a weekend cottage, and I used to go there to, to do a bit of writing. Physical contact was with a female with her uh, twins, and she, she put her hand on the top of my head Hello, my name is Stephen Fry. I was born in London and I've been in the entertainment business since, um, well, I suppose about 1981. Brimful of this optimism and joy and just an insistence on that, you know. And she's not crushed by it somehow. That character still survives. In my cells, we can say, OK, what does this gene really do? Let's try inactivating it and see if it does any change. He was the head of diagnostic medicine. This is a remarkable notion, a remarkable character. More remarkable then than now, I think, in that up until that point, heroes in television drama had beautiful hair, lots of it, splendid teeth and fine jaw lines. And uh, to find something so jagged, so to find such a misfit, such a misanthrope, such a tortured, dark, sarcastic character at the center of a drama was then very unusual.